In an automotive world dominated by advanced technology, indulgent sophistication and inflated price tags, it's refreshing to come across a car that offers unpretentious, effective motoring. It's exactly those attributes, together with space, comfort and value for money, that made the Chevrolet brand great in the 1960s and the 1970s. The Chevrolet Cruze brings those talents into the 21st century. Of course, a lot has changed since those heady Chevrolet days of brifless rugby and sunny skies. Many of the models now wearing the bowtie badge are sourced from General Motors' owned Daewoo in Korea, which has allowed the Chev brand to move rapidly from those big and brutal chrome-drenched machines of 40 years ago to smaller, more agile and, above all, more affordable machines like the Cruze. Originally launched locally in sedan form, the Cruise lineup has now been joined by a hatchback version, perhaps in an effort to attract a younger and sportier motoring audience. The Cruise hatch is an attractive enough car, but it struggles to find its own identity, and that's mainly because the design is simply too generic. In fact, you'll see a mishmash of influences reflected in its bulbous shape. The front is by far the most dominant feature here, with that bold bowtie badge on the crossbar, which of course emphasizes the car's brand identity. And just as well, because the aesthetic influences contained in the cruiser's sculpted lines are wide and varied, with BMW's previous generation 1 series the most obvious styling inspiration. The lines are clean and crisp, but the proportions are too cumbersome to be deemed sporty, especially around the rear of the car. The sedan version offers better visual balance, while the hatch appears too contrived and too derivative from some angles. But then one could argue that cabin execution is more important than exterior styling. Arguably one of the highlights of the Chev Cruze is the interior. It exudes a sense of space and luxury which is quite unusual for a car in this category. Part of the reason, of course, the leather upholstery, also a fully equipped interior and decent ergonomics. The only exception to the rule here, this vast display of plastic on the dashboard, which doesn't fit in with the sense of tactile quality which permeates the rest of the cabin. Mostly though, the cruise interior is a pleasing and comfortable space to spend time in. The list of standard features is impressive, especially given the hatchback's price positioning, and there's a reassuring robustness to the execution that promises both reliability and longevity. The long list of luxury and convenience items is augmented by comprehensive safety measures that include front, side and curtain airbags, as well as ABS brakes and electronic stability control. Rear accommodation is comfortable, but the boots raised cargo floor makes for a shallower than expected luggage area. As its 1.8 LS designation suggests, this cruise is powered by a 1.8 litre four cylinder engine producing 104 kilowatts of maximum power and 176 newton meters of torque. It's neither the most powerful nor the most refined unit, and to make it worse, it's quite peaky, which means you've got to keep the revs right up there close to the red. Of course, the effect is even more pronounced at high felt altitudes, which means that the cruise never feels as eager as its engine output figures promise. While I'm happy to acknowledge that the cruise is not meant to be a hot hatch, it's the car's lack of tractability and low-end response that can be frustrating, especially with a full complement of passengers and their luggage on board. The cruise hatch looks vaguely sporty, but it's no cruise missile when it comes to performance. The reason for that, of course, a PK engine, also tallish gearing and a 1.4-ton curb weight. Remember, therefore, that this car is going to be adequate only as far as dynamics are concerned. And if you want to go quickly, you have to truly thrash this car, keep it in the red at all times. As far as the handling is concerned, pretty sure-footed, a little bit stodgy, I suppose. And the steering could do with a little bit more feedback, just to add a bit of entertainment to the process. But let's not forget that the Cruze is a family hatchback, with its sights set firmly on offering space, comfort and value. For most would-be buyers, the dynamics and handling will be acceptable, and from both a commuting and a long-distance travel perspective, the Chev delivers a pleasant motoring experience. In a petrol-head-driven market like the South African one, it's the fast and the fancy cars that hog the limelight. But in real terms, mass-market products are what keep the wheels of the industry turning. 
And this Chev Cruze hatchback is a perfect example. It offers a nicely balanced, honest package of adequate dynamics and a full house interior. But of course, it's neither swift nor sexy. Still, what it does offer is bang for the buck. And these days, that might be the most important attribute of all. On paper, the 1800cc engine's output figures appear admirable, together with a well-weighted gearbox, decent ride comfort and good brakes. A full house cabin and high safety levels add further appeal, but in practice, the peaky engine compromises response while the boot looks shallower than its claimed capacity suggests.